Thanks very much. So I just want to throw it out there that about three years ago, I was here and I was standing in the back of the room actually against the wall and uh, it was just when Buns was about to go live. And so it's really quite a trip to be here. That and the fact that the hoverboard, there's like a two inch cable here and he makes it look easy and he's ripping across here. And there's a big cable. Okay, so my name's Sasha, I'm the CEO of Buns. I didn't get to see, how many people here know what Buns is or are in a Buns Facebook group? Yeah, what up? Okay, I love you guys. Okay, so I want to share um, some of my recent thoughts around what we're doing, why we're doing it. And so the first question I want to kind of throw out there is like, what do platforms, billionaires, and blockchain all have in common? Uh, did anyone see the video uh, from the World Economic Forum in Davos where the historian confronts the billionaires and says like, we should tax billionaires to create a UBI? Did anyone see that video? Okay, this was a really pretty epic video. but. Um, platforms, uh, billionaires and blockchain all kind of have this same undertone that, that in aggregate are very similar kind of to each other. Uh, platforms centralize a huge amount of value, so do billionaires, and blockchain is almost like some sort of reaction in some regard to kind of what's happening uh, with the centralization of wealth. So really, what they have in common is, is the concept of the distribution of value. That's, that's how I see this kind of playing out right at the moment. And what the distribution of value means is how, you know, who wins in what situation. So if you're on Facebook, who gets paid? If you're, you know, if, you, if there's a, a, some sort of tax applied to, uh, you know, some sort of investor or something, who, who, who actually benefits from the relationship of us and the internet in part particular is what we're going to focus on. So, uh, you know, to kind of kick that off and quantify things, uh, $100 billion was spent between the three largest ad, well, what, some of the, the largest ad, ad networks. So Facebook, uh, Google, and Amazon, between the three of them, about $100 billion was generated in revenue in 2018. So, you know, the argument that was made at, at Davos in the World Economic Forum was that uh, we should tax billionaires and use that to redistribute value to everyone else. Uh, and so if the ad network spend is 100 times that, then that might be a bigger opportunity for us to explore. And in addition to that, uh, it, it's almost like it's reoccurring. This is, this is a reoccurring and growing revenue stream that we have the opportunity to look at and say, hey, what should we really do with that value? How, how do we like, think about what we're gonna do in the future as people? And how do we take that $100 billion and make sure that it goes to the right place? And I think the reason this question is important is because when we think about platforms, uh, you know, let's say even some of the bigger examples like Facebook, um, if, if it had no users, it would be valueless. It would have some amazing tooling, but if no one's using it, no one's going to touch it, no one's going to invest in it, no one's going to say that's amazing, it's worth a whole bunch of money. So really people are where the value is, not platforms. And so then if that's the case, how do we create a non-zero-sum game? A game where you know, or, or a system by which brands can still reach us as people and interact with us, but uh, remove the intermediary who's extracting the value, in this particular case, social platforms, and directly compensate people. This is the type of stuff that we're thinking about. How do we engineer a non-zero-sum game? And really, the idea there is, is what's the alternative? So we've seen things like um, platforms uh, responding to each other. So someone builds a viral feature, and that viral feature, let's go back a couple years, Snapchat was uh, you know, uh, disappearing video. And we've seen the platforms react to each other and copy each other and swallow that feature. So then what's the thing that they can't copy that's the alternative to that? Uh, and I really think what we're actually alluding to is decentralized internet income. And does anyone here know what UBI is? Universal Basic Income? Cool. So I, the contention I constantly have with UBI is like, there's always like this thing that's like, okay, we're going to tax the rich and then we're going to use that. Or we're going to create some sort of new pool of money that's dilutive to the government's funding and then we're going to use that. But we have this $100 billion kind of annual, if not more, fund of money that's moving between businesses who want to reach you as people for your data. And instead of going to you, it's going to platforms. And so I think the question for us to kind of explore is how do we decentralize and create an internet income that's sustainable through uh, kind of readjusting the ad networks? Um, to quantify the work that Buns is doing in this space, 
you know, in 2018, 100 million bits were spent at uh, retail locations across the country. There are over 250 shops that accept our currency. Uh, but I think it's like 110 of which are in Toronto. Um, and that's a that's million dollars. So people spent a million dollars at retail locations last year, or not even last year, in just the last 10 months in our currency. So that's over 2.9 million transactions in our currency. Um, and that excludes peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So if you're, like, you're using something on the Buns app, you can post something and you know, someone else can kind of uh, transact with you for it. So I wanted to just show you kind of what that might look like. I'm getting the one minute left thing here. Uh, what that looks like is, you know, as you're scrolling through the Buns app, you actually might see an ad. And if you look at that ad, for the first time when you encounter it, it'll ask you if you want to start earning more and share that data to kind of have more contextual advertising. And maybe you'll get paid instead of one bit with no data sharing, you'll get paid 10 bits. Our goal, uh, essentially, is by 2030 to go from, in our current state, when a business gives us revenue or pays us to reach our customer base, 60% of the value is going to you right now. And our goal is to go to 100% of the value going to you by 2030 and zero of it going to us. Um, so that's where we're going. And really for us, the question kind of we, I would leave you with is like, or I'd kind of challenge you to, to think about is how are you going to build a business and ensure that um, you're doing something worth doing beyond just making sure that you're going to become you know, wealthy and successful? How do you help everyone else? And our objectives and our goals at Buns are to make sure that the community benefits first. Um, so uh, lastly, uh, we have a promo code for TechTO. So if you do have the Buns app and you activate your wallet, I'm going to shill for a second, sorry. Uh, but everyone gets 2,000 bits if you use TechTO as the promo code when you activate your wallet. And if you don't have the app, you can scan the QR code with your phone and get on it. Thank you. Cool. Lastly, I just want to say my team is here. Thank you, guys. I love you. You guys are really what makes all this possible. You're the best. Questions. Questions, questions. I'll, I'll There's start. one over there. I'll, well, while the runners go, I'll start. It's Alex here. So, yep. how, how have you created a stable coin, right? Like, yeah, we created a stable coin. How, how have you managed to keep it stable? Uh, this is going to sound like the craziest thing that we've done, but we literally backed it with our own money. We took money and we put it in a bank account and said that's to back the redemptions against Treasury. Um, and then the question becomes not how you stabilize the currency, but how you sustain, how do you make a sustainable stable coin? And the answer to that is to have a model by which businesses want to acquire that currency to reach customers. And that, that way there's demand and supply for both sides of the marketplace. And I think we've been probably one of the only ones who've been successful at that. Question in the back there. So the question, I heard you, I got you. So the question was, how, is every, how are markets going to be affected by blockchain? Is that effect, f fair? When all assets are on blockchain. I'm going to buy fractional ownership in your shirt. I'm going to charge you rent. <laughs> no, so the, the, it's a really interesting question. And so essentially the question is like, when everything is has the the possibility of kind of being uh, fractional in its ownership, um, how will that kind of create uh, a new ecosystem and market? So I think the first problem in answering that is that uh, the way, so for those of you who don't understand, I'm going to rewind. Uh, Bits is an ERC-223, but it also functions as a centralized data point on an application. So what that means is we've built a bridge between Ethereum mainnet and the Buns application. So you can choose to have it on the application, or you can choose to have it uh, you know, on Ethereum mainnet. But I think what that will likely do is create liquid new kind of new uh, markets uh, that will offer cross compatibility in new asset classes. Uh, that's likely something to that effect will happen. Last question. Okay, Ray, lucky you. I'm nice to uh, meet you. Um, yeah, my question is, from my understanding, is that you are a payment coin, essentially. 
and that do you feel that the government regulation will come in if your price is volatile and that they will regulate you as a security? Uh, I don't think so. I think the question is, is like, if, if you're, I would like position it more like this, is like if you're bringing a whole lot of value to people and making people's lives more affordable by like the hundreds of thousands in Toronto alone, is that good for the economy or bad for the economy? I mean, I think, so when it comes to, you know, securities and tokens, like really on the Buns app, all it is is a centralized loyalty point. And you have the choice as to whether or not you want to take it as an ERC-223 or an ERC-20. So the point there is, is like, it's almost like an Amex point. And then if you want to have your own ownership of that asset, because there's a responsibility to that, we don't force it on you. But if you want that choice, you can have that choice. So I think that's where there's a significant difference in the way you perceive kind of uh, securities tokens, is what you're alluding to, and uh, kind of a, a medium of exchange utility. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Love you guys. Thanks, Buns.